going on, everybody? And welcome back to the A Show with the Kings Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am Justin here with Meals. Uh, what's going on, Meals? Listen, man, six years in the can, baby. Six years of them things, man. We here. I mean, yeah. we here. <laughs> major, major shit. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm happy about it. This is, this is episode three thirteen. What area, area code is three one three? Three one three. Shouldn't it be like St. Louis? No. Detroit. Detroit. There Detroit. you go. <laughs> so Everybody in the three one three. I knew it, I know it was in the Midwest because I think isn't St. Louis three one four? I think St. Louis. I have three. no I knew, idea. I knew it was in the Midwest. I have no idea. I don't have various uh, bros and different area codes. I think that would be the 2023. Would it? I don't know. Could you do area codes by Ludacris? I mean, besides the girl who sampled it and claimed that she never fucking <laughs> heard area codes by Ludacris, which is nuts. Um, yeah, I mean, she must have been like a Mormon. <laughs> it's nuts. But I don't know. She's young. But nonetheless, area codes. Here we are. Um, I'm feeling great. I'm here. I'm blessed. Um Got a lot of things going on this week. Of course, sixth anniversary episode. It's also Halloween. You surprised me with probably one of the best things I've ever seen this weekend of you dressed in a Deku costume. <laughs> well, it's, out. it's out now. So, yeah. Was yeah. I supposed to drop that or no? <laughs> no, I mean, it's fine. It's, I mean, if you're a patron for Black Print, you've seen the um, episode. I think I'm going to post a picture later today. So, I mean, it's okay. It's yeah. All right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm hoping if you're listening to this on Patreon, I hope you have a great safe Halloween. If you're not listening to this on Patreon, I hope your Halloween was awesome and you did not get totally wasted on a Tuesday night. Um, with that said, we got a big announcement this week. We're dropping new merch, ladies and gentlemen. New merch alert. Do we have a dollar sign? Do you still have a Black Prince stuff loaded? Oh, hold on. Let me load it up right here. All right. There it goes. Go ahead. All right. Do we have new new merch alert? There you go. New merch alert. Um, <laughs> it took us five years to drop one piece of merch, and now it's taking one year to drop another one. Um, thank you guys for always being a part of us. This is our six-piece hot takes one. That's why we're doing hot takes this week. Um, to celebrate one of our most, I, I think, a personally iconic segments on the show is Hot Takes. Every time we do it, it's amazing. I was just looking through some old ones, and they were fire. Um, so we got a brand new shirt. It's definitely food inspired. It's Harlem Heat inspired. It's Hot Takes inspired. And most importantly, it's a show branded. So I feel like you guys should get your... Uh, Get a shirt. It'll be out this Friday. Everywhere this Friday, rncradio.bigcartel.com. Um, stay subscribed to our Instagram and our um, Twitter for more. You know, you'll get the live link when it goes up and stuff like that. So make sure you stay tuned. But I look forward to um, being able to put out merch again. It's always awesome to see everyone wearing um, and repping the A show. It's always awesome. Hey, hey, I love the shirt. Meals, you kind of did this covertly. I had no clue that it was you had we were this far along. Usually I'll see like emails come through and I'll be like, what the fuck is Meals doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> then you'll pop up with I like I never read them, but I'm like, I, I see it because we, we share the same email, but like I'll see it come through and I'll be like, what is it? What is it? what is this guy planning? What is he cooking? <laughs> you'll just see random expenses coming across the way and just like, oh, what the fuck was that? All right. Um <laughs> But with that said, we look forward. Thank you, guys. Please cop a shirt. Please wear it to whatever event you're going. There's plenty of wrestling events that are coming in this fall. Wear it to an AEW show, piss some people off. Wear it to a WWE show, make some new friends. Um, wear it anywhere that you go. Wear it when you eat in a six piece of wings, man. Eat it when you let me. We're not going to do the one one chip challenge again or really anything spicy after that. I think I've still, that haunts me to this day. But it's a great <laughs> shirt. It just does. That was the most painful experience I've ever. If you are not subscribed to our Patreon, um, that means you haven't seen it. 
But if you are subscribed to our Patreon and if you haven't seen it, at least look up one chip challenge on our Patreon just to see the video of us like dying. <laughs> I, I wasn't right for a week after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. But um we here, it's a we got a lot of hot takes this week. But there's a I don't know if there's any news. I don't know if there's anything quick you want to cover before we get into hot takes. Um, I, I mean, there was a big match that happened. You wouldn't even. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have known it oh, happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> a huge match. I feel like we're burying the lead talking about all this shit. But like, I, I, I want to get I want to talk about something really quick before we get into hot takes. OK. Um, two things, actually. Uh, it is the it's some type of an- anniversary of the of the Halloween Havoc match between the Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior in WCW. Yes, yes, that definitely happened. Have you? Have you? I believe me and Cyrus watched it, but have you? What have you ever seen this match? I've seen it plenty of times. I've seen it. I've seen. I've seen the match. I've seen on the Warrior DVD. They talk about the match. <laughs> I've seen various um, back in the day all the shoot interviews surrounding the match, so I have definitely I'm tapped into the lore of what a painful, painful experience this Halloween <laughs> havoc. I mean, it wasn't all, was a uh, no Eddie and Ray wasn't on this one. That was 1997, right? I think it was 97. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this one was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> so that, what are this... your thoughts? What were your thoughts? Did you watch it live? Uh yeah, I did. I did. We I was like I was primarily like a WCW household until really that year. And then I I would I it was I'd imagine. Much, yeah. Like I, I until that year ended, I was like, yeah, Stone Cold's really cool. You know what I mean? Like it it, it was like a it was a fleeting passion, then it became just like the main passion. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, but look at it, it's sandwiched between Bret Hart versus Sting and Goldberg versus Diamond Dallas Page. Right. Like <laughs> Two probably good matches. Um, I know the I've watched the Goldberg versus Diamond Dallas Page one. I never watched Bret Hart versus Sting, but I assume it's the no, that's not it. I assume it's something with sharp dueling sharpshooters at at this point. Um, yeah. Wow, the rest of this card is terrible too. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty bad pay per view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was funny to watch the wrestling bios. If you guys don't watch wrestling bios on YouTube, like that's one of my favorite channels. But it's funny to see him review it and see it in twenty twenty three eyes, and it's just like it's just as bad as you as you thought it was. Like it, it's terrible. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Second thing. On, go ahead. On, I'm sorry. What, what were you going to say? No, 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 no. Go, go ahead. I was going to uh, segue. There, there is a there is a conversation we're having in our Discord about people, and it's the second time someone's brought it up, and I got to bring it up here. Like somebody was saying that their parents were afraid of the razor and the food, or razor and the candy during Halloween. That old kind of like old yes. wives' tale, kind of like. And, and when you were younger, right, you were kind of made to believe that this was a widespread phenomenon of people. Uh, putting razors in candy right but the rule has always been check your candy like when i went trick-or-treating we emptied the bag we checked every piece of candy my mom would be there with me like check it touch it you know what i'm saying do all of that stuff if it was like an apple or if it was something that was like in a bag if it was like a fruit or something we tossed it if it was right. candy nobody has a candy resealer in their house let's just be real like no Pretty one's much, that, yes. no one's that deranged you can't do it you will be able to tell if the candy's been tampered with have you were were you of the mind that like the the razor and the butterfinger was was just as like widespread as it was? Um, no, I wasn't. So I hadn't actually gone into the Discord. So this is new for me. I didn't know it was widespread. I literally only thought it was a New York thing <laughs> because why would it not be? Considering everyone was getting like buck fifty and fucking um, gang. Like when I grew up as a kid, it was like crime you know what i'm saying crime was still especially new york city crime juliana giuliani era crime you know what i'm saying um where that was a very real aspect and my parents who are not from this country from trinidad if you saw something on the news it was real so if there was any news report of latest thing razors in your child's candy you back at nine 
chances are they're believing it. And I'm, you know, I very seldom went trick or treating around houses. I would only really get my treats from school. Right. And that's what, like, I just think that it's, it's, it's interesting to see how, how everyone's experiences with Halloween changes from place to place, person to person, family to family, and seeing people, like seeing people's like parents, like actually stop them from like being able to go trick or treating. Not to say that's not to say that's like the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you really kind of have maybe like a three to four year window before that shit starts getting old. But yeah, like, it's it's funny to see that like they're like nope, can't go out. They're gonna try and kill you. And I'm just like, that's, if that's the no, case, that that was a thing. Like legitimately, or I was gonna get egged. Like I've gotten. Believe it or not, it was the wackest part. Like, I don't like this. I got hit by an egg once, and I'll say it. And the reason why it was the wackest thing was I was waiting for the bus, and as I was getting on the bus, they threw the egg. So there's, like, no retaliation. Like, I'm already... The thing about New York is that it's, like, streets of rage every day out there. Yes, it was. It really was. (laughs) I believe it's, like, the Warriors (laughs) every day out there. Like, I get that. But, like... In your regular suburb, I don't think anyone's killing, you know what I'm saying, trying to put razors in people's you know, kids' mouths and shit. But like I, I can I can get with I can get with the fear because even in like Halloween two, the movie Halloween two came out in like the eighties. Um, there was a kid who had bit into something and he had a razor in it, and there's like a little and it's not like a big part of the movie, but you see the kid walking past with a bloody mouth or whatever. And I was like, Okay, it was definitely a thing. It's definitely something that people did, but I'm like, Y'all but I'm like to the parents, I'm like Y'all ain't sitting with y'all kids and emptying out the bag and making sure that they're not just eating the first piece of candy they see. Like, that's the first thing we did when we walked in the house. I couldn't touch the candy till my mom uh, thoroughly checked it. And she took some for yeah. herself. Of course. That's what you do. You see the best one. Oh, you got mad Skittles here. Let me let me hold that. You know what I'm saying? I did that for my nieces as well. Um, but we would get pretty shitty corner store candy. Like, <laughs> the New York City experience isn't going to houses. It's going to stores. And... Every store has to have candy for Halloween or you look nuts when kids come up. I mean, beauty supply stores, um, corner stores, Burger King, barbershop, everywhere. You need to have candy because we live by apartment buildings. So no one is going in an apartment building and going up four to seven flights to knock on everyone's door for candy. So your business needs to have it. Um, and this is and this is really just to be like, like honestly, the only reason it's like this in New York is because um, you can't easily get into people's places, right? Like that that's the deal. Yes, yeah, you can't really go into a building. You need to be buzzed into the building. So it's like, unless you lived in like a, I mean, there there's definitely areas. There's like Queens and 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 in some parts of Brooklyn and some parts of the Bronx. To be honest with you, but if you're in like the deep heavy like area with like where i am where there's a bunch of apartment buildings like yeah did you just had to go around to stores and stuff like that you know i i just want people to be safe you know what i mean I, I, me too me too you know ultimately you know if that that's if that was how your parents got down that's how your parents got down but uh you know i just think it's crazy that nobody was just checking the damn candy reaching in the candy and see like <laughs> coming out with a bloody hand and seeing like ah! see? I fucking ah! told you. Yeah, I, like, I fucking what? told you. Look at that. Four razors right here. <laughs> <laughs> Just four. See that? Mr. Good Bar? Yeah, Mr. Razor Bar. Yeah, yeah right? The fuck out of here. Okay. All right. Sorry. I decided to bring up those two things. Go ahead. Continue. No, of course. Um, I want to get into hot takes because we got quite a bit. Y'all really ran it up, which I appreciate. Um, some of y'all multiple hot takes. But still, we got a good bunch. Hot takes or questions. I asked for questions as well in case you had questions. We have hot takes. We have non-wrestling hot takes. We kind of got it all. I want to start. What I want to do is we. I don't want to go too long form on all of them, considering we have so many. Um, But I do want to see if we can get through all of them for this okay. show. Okay. Um, and then we're going to get into the predictions for the event on Saturday. Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel. Uh, Look, a very standard pay per view to me. I don't know if the Saudi prince is going to be. <laughs> That's not standard. I mean, it's, it's John Cena is there. Yeah, John Cena Roman is there. That's not standard. I'm I'm just not I'm not used to Brock not being there. It's it's weird. Um, 
with that said, let's start off with the first hot take, which comes from one of our own Discord members. You'll call me Rob. And you know What's how up, we bro? feel about Rob. You know What's how up? we feel about Rob. I give Rob a lot of shit. But I think I think ultimately the chat should just know when to interact and when not <laughs> because he's just trying to get a rise out of niggas, man. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but I believe he legitimately believes everything that he's saying. But nonetheless. <laughs> that's the um, scary part. <laughs> that's the scary part. But you know what? Different strokes, different folks. Shout out to Rob. Um, he says, Kevin Owens is the greatest wrestler to come out of Canada in the past 20 years. I wouldn't. I would say ever, but the old heads love Bret Hart, which I feel like is shots. <laughs> shot. That's definitely a shot. But here's here's my thing. Here's my thing. Uh Kenny Omega's my... from Canada. Ah uh, you know, you this... know, Rob Rob said that I don't usually be walling out in my hot takes. And I'm like, this is definitely a walling out hot take. Yeah. There's Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Um, who else is Kenny Omega? That that's I mean, you you get into it after that. There's, there's yeah. a couple more. Uh, Peter's off a little bit. Yeah, uh, Peter's off quite a bit. It is. He's top five for sure. To me, I would say he's top five for sure. I would say um, it's a, it's a large argument. I think. Do you prefer Kevin Owens or do you prefer Sami Zayn? Let me ask oh. you that. Oh, Oh, that's tough. <laughs> really no one's like ever that. asked that, but it, it, it feels like it depends on the the vibe that you're going for, right? Yeah. Because at one point it could be Sammy, other points could definitely be KO. Like, I think for now I prefer KO, but Sammy's singles reign I feel like is just starting now. Like right. I feel like I feel like his run has begun. And I and I would not want to call it too early, but um, yeah, I would okay. I would say I'd say K- KO for now, KO for now. Okay, um, yeah, I would say KO top five. Um, next one comes from DMV fan one two three. DMV, my Adam, my 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 guy, my Your Alex Riley. <laughs> That's not my Alex Riley, bro. That's my <laughs> Adam Pierce. He is the he's my eyes and ears when I'm not around. Okay, he's your J and J security. Yeah, um, DMV <laughs> Pierce, Adam DMV Pierce. Donald one, no no slander shall touch his wonderful the top of his wonderful head. No slander shall touch it. And as long as okay. I'm around, leave my All guy. Right. All right. Okay. All right. He says I'm no ageist. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> You just said, starting off with that is crazy. He says, I'm no ageist, and I'm perfectly okay with men and women of all ages having matches on national TV. But the hypocrisy from AEW fans claiming that they dropped WWE because of the over-reliance on old talent, while AEW has multiple old acts running around their TV, needs to be called out. Solid take. Mm. Mm. Ric Flair literally just came out. (laughs) Ric Flair came out. And I said, I know they're not about to book him in no fucking match. No, but he's on the roster through March 2024. (laughs) Jesus Christ. He is a major part of Sting's retirement now. There's a if there's a bag, and if wrestlers know there's a bag and some dummy is just giving out bags, they gonna go for it. You know? It just is what it is. Um do you care for his non-wrestling hot take? Yeah, I care for I care for anything he does. Okay. With the hottest competition we've seen in a video game in years, Starfield should not be nominated for Game of the Year. Can you comment on this? I cannot comment on that. Okay. <laughs> I, I think... Going, we're going to move on then. <laughs> I don't think that Starfield would be in my personal Game of the Year. Um, okay. I am sure there's a lot of people that enjoy it. I know some people that enjoy it, but I think my top my my top games of the year would be different. I I can't call it for the the, the general game of the year. That's what I can okay. say. Okay. <clears throat> um, next one comes from Caleb. Shout out to you, Caleb. What's up, um, Caleb? It says, "I don't see it with Eddie Kingston. Dude is like plain pasta noodles with a dab of sriracha sauce." There's a little bit of heat, but the rest of it's just cold and hard. He's got intensity in his promos, 
but they have the substance of soggy cereal. Jeez, he's hungry. I, I am. I am actually hungry right now. Is there a razor, Caleb, in, the, is there a razor in the cereal? It's a razor in the pasta. Um, Eddie Kingston, I feel like has. I feel like we, we watch wrestling for a long time. And there are wrestlers that are more skilled than others in various different areas. And I think Eddie Kingston has great mic work, but has no athleticism. But to be honest with you, that's like most people in the Attitude Era. Um, I think Eddie Kingston, with the right things around him, could swell up and get some buzz and actually be somewhere near a top guy. Um, but personally me, I don't buy Eddie Kingston because I'm from New York <laughs> and he represents to me a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stereotypes of New York. Um, and that's how I legitimately kind of like see him, but I do think there's a space for him in AEW and I think he has something to contribute. What say you? A wise man once said, take a shower. Hit the weights, get a clue. <laughs> That's how I feel about Kingston. <laughs> oh my god! All right, and his non wrestling hot takes says the Batman is better than the Dark Knight. I don't say yeah. this lightly. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm willing to back that. I'll, I'll back that take. I'll back that take. I, I think, I think the Dark Knight was great for its time. I think right. the Batman is is a more faithful adaptation of what that character is and what he wants to be and what it could be. And I think it it, it asks the questions that people online who like love to say Batman's a fascist. I think it answers those questions with him coming to terms with the fact that his privilege is partially the reason why the city is that is, is has turned out that way and having to reckon with that. So like absolutely. Next one comes from Epo. It says. I think Becky's NXT title run was the second greatest in NXT women's title history. And I think it was low-key used as a dry run or test run for the possibility of a women's mid-card title on the main roster in a year or two. Hmm. That's an interesting way to, to think about that. I didn't think of it think of it like that. I thought Becky just didn't want to work with nobody on the main roster. Or they were just trying <laughs> to like keep her away from certain characters that might have shown back up. But... um. Second, what 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 do they think is the first one? Did they say that? Did they say what they thought the first? No, one? no. Um, I would assume it's Oscar. I would assume. Yeah, there's no way it's like um, Sasha. She like had it for like barely. Like, yeah, like a month. <laughs> like, yeah, she, like it was gone. Um, I just say women's title reigns. I you know what? If Oscar's number one, I'm willing to put. Um, cause like, who do we have to compare it to? Like, I thought EO had great matches, but it was like a COVID era reign. So I don't really remember a lot of it. Shayna? Uh, uh-uh. uh, um, Raquel. Hey. Rhea. No, Raquel. No. Mandy. Mandy. Hmm. She, how many, I wouldn't how say many? Mandy was 413 days. I wouldn't say she had the best matches. Um, but she had notable matches and it was clear that she improved and she was, Helping put a lot of other people on the map as well. Well, I thought just Becky's the the main event of No Mercy and yeah, yeah, yeah. She really took it to the next level. Like she, yeah, she, 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 she was the draw. You know Becky what I'm saying? Not being in some people's top five or top three or top ten this year is going to be crazy. Becky single handedly beat AEW this week. Yeah, like it, like. I don't see a world where you're putting a lot of like, and I know Joshi, like I don't, I don't watch a lot of it, but like, I know that like, just in terms of box office, really good matches, stuff like that. She's definitely in the conversation with some of them girls. Like, you know what I mean? Like she, she's, and it's going to be tough. You know what I'm saying? When it comes down to it. But like, I mean, Bianca was out for a large part of the year, not right. a large part, but like, she was kind of like, kind of floundering a little bit. Um, Charlotte was out and Charlotte was legitimately out for a large part of the year. Um, you know, like in terms of the WWE side, it's got to be, it's got to be Becky in some way, shape, or form, right? It's got to be. I think, yeah, she's been the most consistent throughout the entire year. So, um, but the test of a women's mid card title, I do see that as well. And I never really was for it before, but considering how many women got an opportunity at this championship and had really great matches because of it, I can definitely, I'm now a proponent for it. 
if they choose to go that route. It'd be cool. It would be cool. I just want to see, you know, I just want to see how they would integrate that into the into the main roster. But I think like it, at first we were like kind of shocked that Becky was was you know kind of won the title, and then we kind of got used to it, and then. You know, we, we knew it was going to be a short time, and I think that they definitely made the best of it. It was definitely one of my favorite storylines of the year was Becky being in NXT. I agree. Great match for Lyra Valkyria. Um, next one comes from, is it C-Ed? C-Ed, S-Y-E-D. Um, not sure if this is a hot take. That usually means it's not. Um, but <laughs> Cody losing at WrestleMania was clearly right from a business perspective and entertainment perspective been six months and people can't admit people who can't admit it are honestly pathetic you cannot like it and be disappointed but claiming that the objective was that (laughs) claiming it to be the objective wrong decision is sad and probably forum posted pilled um we finishing the story bitch (laughs) i like that i like that we we agree in a sense i i agree i definitely agree um, Besides all the insults, I didn't think that was necessary, but here we are. Oh, fuck it. Fuck it. I like that. I like the negativity. Niggas is pathetic. All right, niggas is pathetic. Right. I like that. I like the negativity. Listen, I I I remember that conversation we had, Mills, after WrestleMania, directly after it. We were like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, listen. Because we had a whole conversation before. It's like, is it time? And we we're like, it's fucking time, bro. <laughs> and, I, and I said it, and but that was before Roman came out. And I was and I was like, this motherfucker don't ever get a special intro. So I I, I definitely was 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 looking at it funny. And I as the time went on, I was like, yeah, I don't know if this is the time. But mm. uh, you know, I I I am um, I I got I got over it. <laughs> I, I got yeah, over you it. get over it. It it is what it is. What are we gonna do? And the, and the thing is that it get, if we, if he wins that we don't get that Brock program, you know what I mean? Like that's that's really the long and short of it. Like maybe, I, I just feel like we do. I, I think it hits. I think it hits a lot less if you put Brock right back in the title picture after that. No, you're right. You're right. I think it. Um, it I, think, I think it doesn't hit as it doesn't hit as hard. So, um, I, I definitely feel the the frustration. I just don't get how like people thought the company was going to be over after. You know what I mean? After the uh, after the loss or whatever. So like, you know, what what, what can you do? What can you do? We're living I, I, in Roman's world until he stops being the draw that he is. I can't really see anyone else pulling him from that spot. To be honest with you, um, his non wrestling hot take is that Snapple is the best soft drink ever invented. Mm-hmm. I love I, I love I a good Snapple. I, I, lo- I was with you with I was with you till then. I was with you till then. Mm. I, I love a good Snapple. So I'm not I'm not mad at it. Greatest soft drink. I think it's maybe like top might be a top twenty. Um twenty, top twenty. Yeah, top twenty, top fifteen. I I'll go top yeah, fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. don't have Snapple enough. Like if it's if it's up to me They got rid like, of the glass bottle, that's why it's knocked down a couple spots for me. Yeah, the, if drinking out of plastic is nasty. Is it like yeah, like drinking out of the plastic gross. bottle is nasty? So like it's, it's when, gross. <laughs> when I see that plastic bottle and I see a sprite, I'm gonna pick the sprite up. I'm I'm sorry. I I just you know, Snapple yeah, just yeah. doesn't work. Yeah, soda. Uh, it's plastic. I'm not mind. Snapple. Nah, that glass <laughs> bottle hit different. Um, next one comes from Joel Sanda. <laughs> this is a long one. So all right. Stay on this ride with me. Hot take. Gunther's title reign does not come close to Roman's in any way. Don't get me wrong. Gunther has been great. And this is clearly the best IC title run. But I feel like a lot of praise in the IWC is using it to cut, undercut Roman's historic title run. This is a sentiment from WWE fans and anti-WWE fans that is shared. Gunther's reign is what their idea of the perfect champion is. 20-minute matches, constantly on TV, no outlandish storylines or promos. They can accept that Roman Reigns, already unfairly criticized because he's a top guy, is the undisputed star of the industry, and WWE has crafted a historic championship reign around him by doing the complete opposite of Gunther and succeeding at it. Roman's run 
lasting three years and being the hottest character is unprecedented and the biggest accomplishment in wrestling in the modern era. I think it eats away at certain people and their very small idea of what wrestling is. So uh, I'm just going to go back to the first sentence where he says, Gunther's reign does not come close to Romans in any way. That was the hot take. <laughs> was, was that was that Paul Heyman that wrote that? It might have been. It might have been, baby. <laughs> Here's a, I would love to see Roman and Gunther just cross paths backstage just once. Just to get the feel of it. Yeah, that would be it'd be dope. I, I think that you know how I say a lot of the time we need to appreciate Roman while he's here. <clears throat> I think we're getting to the moment where people are starting to kind of they're kind of seeing the tea leaves here in terms of just like okay, like we we might be winding the story. He's down. not defending it after Survivor Series. Like, <laughs> so nigga, he's it's, it's three fucking years. <laughs> yeah, like I I think that you know what I mean. I I. I it's hard to accept that things change. I think that's really what it is. It's hard to accept that things are changing. I saw somebody say, "Oh, they fumbled his face turn a couple years ago," and I was like, "Well, you know why they? You know why it, you know that there were many things that happened that fumbled that face turn. There were a lot of things that happened. WWE, I, I think, takes their primary blame, blame for a lot of that, but also the the rejection of change was was a very big part of that as well. You know what I mean? Like it's hard for people to let go of. Hogan, it's hard for people to let go of Stone Cold, it's hard for people to let go of Rock, it's hard for people to let go of, you know, people that are on the roster right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I saw people saying Dolph Ziggler would be missed. Like, nigga, what? But I think ultimately when people recognize that that <laughs> Roman is, is everything that they wanted him to be at this point, it didn't happen when it when they wanted it to happen, but it's happening now. Like you have to, you have to respect that. Like I think that in terms of like you know, the, the type of champion that, you know, you want to have in this era, you couldn't do this in the Attitude Era with, with Roman, obviously, because of the way the TV ratings were at that time. You know what I mean? It was just such a big deal. You can do this now. He, he doesn't have to be on TV all the time because the product is hot. But why is the product hot? Because of his title reign. He can take time off because he was the one who opened up the, the door to let that happen again. And There's I don't storylines going on where he's not even on TV. Yeah. But he's powering those storylines just in general. Still. <laughs> Still. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, how else can you, you know what I mean? How else can, how else can you explain it? This, this, he, is the, he is the nucleus of a storyline he's not involved in anymore of a person he beat a year ago. <laughs> like, that's how, that's how insane the story is. And again, when it's all said and done, not only appreciating what the bookers and the creative from, and, and this is a storyline that's gone from Mills. It's gone from Vince to Triple H. So it's gone from two different people that are like handling, you know, the main, you know, breast, you know, uh, broad strokes of this, uh, this storyline. I don't see how you could deny it. Like, like Gunther's doing a great job. I, I think the, the, the segment, I know we're not doing it a lot on the shows today, but like, the segment with him and Miz was fantastic. That was the first time I felt like Gunther was not only just a really great talker, and he he might, you know, in time be considered one of the, the best talkers on the mic in the company, but also he he came off with the with the the cockiness of a Roman Reigns. Like, how did you feel did about you, that? I first of all, I love that segment not because of the Miz. I look at Miz is awesome, and the show being sponsored by the Challenge was even more awesome. <laughs> I was like, Yo. that was crazy. Um, they need the ratings bad. <laughs> What a challenge does, challenge does? Yeah, yeah. Challenge challenge ratings are in the shitter. Um, but I love the, the unsung part about that segment I love was when Miz is going back and forth with Vinci and um and he Ludwig. Talks. <laughs> right, right. He talks. Underrated part. And then Gunther's music hits and it felt like an ominous mood shift. It felt like the legitimately like the final boss was coming out to survey is like what the fuck is going on here you know what i'm saying and you know that someone you're going to have to face on the way but you're probably gonna have to face these two guys before gunther it's it's a different title reign than roman i can't even compare their title reigns to be honest with you um if you want if you're a roman reigns fan and you want him to defend every month it's tough for you but you should probably be paying attention to gunther yeah like it's because he's killing it. 
in every sense of the word. And that is what you want out of a champion. So just deal with, just live with that. You know what I'm saying? I think they're, I think they're not comparable. Um, but I think it's both have been, it's interesting to see both of them are establishing these guys as clearly top guys on their show and pillars of their show. So whatever they're doing, even though they're completely different reigns, is absolutely working. Um, the non-wrestling hot take is thanks for the great content and congrats on the six years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I love it. You, hey, you had the you hey, you you had a great hot take. I thought that was great. Great uh um, great, great writing as well. Next one comes from Siraj. Says WWE does not need Sasha Banks Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> it is very clear now, and the only people who deny it are anti WWE weirdos and her fan base. If she this was is, available, the, the anti WWE more. weirdos are like also the pro WWE weirdos. Like that's the funny the part about the Sasha stuff. But. The need for her to be booked as a top star is exhausting and would hinder all the young stars they are building to replace the four horsewomen as they age out. Also, they have multiple people who are more reliable than her: Becky, Rhea, Bianca, and like forty girls in NXT because that division is nuts. She should stick to doing Q and Odd movies and selling crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm while I agree WWE does not need Sasha, WWE doesn't need anybody. Maybe Roman Reigns, but that is where it is. <laughs> that is Roman, it. They need Roman and Becky for sure. Yeah, but, but that is really it. Like, oh, Roman, Becky, and Bianca. I'm sorry. Roman, Becky, and Beyonce. Sorry, sorry to be interrupt. Right. If anyone else left, it's like you probably not gonna. You, it, it'd probably end up like Edge, to be honest with you. Oh God, I, the, Edge, I, the Edge thing is the saddest shit ever. <laughs> it, it is. It is. I, we're Adam Cole. Um, however, <laughs> I do think that there is value in Sasha Banks Mercedes, but there's only value if she's willing to accept the role, which she does not want to accept. So, to be honest, there's. <laughs> it's not gonna work out. Maybe it'll happen later down the line. But to be honest with you, I legitimately think if Sasha Banks and Mercedes came back, she would win for maybe three months and go back to losing. Because that that's the company, the, the direction the company is going in. But she, I, I would say Sasha Banks, out of a bunch of stars, I'd say she's a more notable star, wrestling star, than a lot of people give her credit for. Um, you have talked about her. I think we have talked about her at length for like last year or so. Do you have any thoughts on this? Don't talk to my man like that. I like it when you like it. No more, <laughs> more Sasha talk. No more, more <laughs> Sasha talk. I don't care what you want. You can watch her wherever you want. She can go work wherever. I don't care what she do. <laughs> this is a great cover. <laughs> Keep going. Y'all are the only ones banging for her. I don't care what she do. Don't talk to my man like that. I don't like it when you like it. <laughs> <laughs> no no point, Sasha. Talk. All right, go ahead. Um, next one comes from Donnie Fails. Shout out to Donnie, our social media Stop. manager. Stop playing, so, his, still- Stop playing his label long in Tekken, bro. That nigga is... They'll, they'll never respect him. Go ahead. <laughs> it says if Dom Mysterio stays on this trajectory of being a big heel, he could be world champion in two or three years. Do you see Dom Mysterio as a world champion? A sneaky in one. Two or three okay. years. Money in the bank win. Champion. Money, yeah. money in the bank win, right? Yeah, for sure. Um also non wrestling hot take. <laughs> the feet fetish mafia is the most unhinged and unholy group on Twitter. <laughs> Where where'd that one come from? Sometimes I feel like people when they're not in their non hot take one, they you know how when niggas take the mic on the, when, when uh somebody's like doing the <laughs> yeah. don't do it to Donnie, please. <laughs> um, next one comes from Jalen. Oh God, why are you that old God for Jalen? <laughs> Oh God! Here he is. Here he goes. What, what is it? I wish uh, hot take. I feel like the sets in 1994 WWF superstars was better than 2023 WWE. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jalen. I'm sorry. Um, 
He says, hashtag Jade Talk. People have Jeez, got to tone. Fucking, I'm about to throw my fucking water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> People have got to tone down their expectations for Jade off the bat. I think all the hype that WWE have given her is cool and is adding to her aura, but people are wilding talking about Rumble wins and Mania main events right off the bat. Jade, the in-ring performer, is very much a work in progress, and they need to take their time with her because long-term success is greater than short-term success. Um, I will say this. I was watching Carmelo Hayes' interview with Black Wrestling. Shout-out to Black Wrestling. Shout-out to Mimi and Cal, um, who did the interview. And shout-out to everyone else, fam, and... um and math um when the it was an interesting part where they talked about jade and he was like have you given her any pointers and she's like yo she really kind of knows what to do and stuff like that and it's like you i think there's some point where it's like are you do you feel like she's not he didn't they didn't ask her like do you feel like she's ready but they kind of like say like oh she's probably ready and he it was a slight like pause <laughs> Where he was like, I didn't say all that, but <laughs> I think she knows what she's doing and she can do what's best for Jade at the end of the day. Or it literally, mean, like, I don't know if she, the general consensus was one, she doesn't really need my input because she probably gets paid more than me. Two. <laughs> That's a sense um, I got. I, I, sense, I sense that heavily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two, she may not be ready yet to be able to do anything, but she will get there at the end of the day, if we all stay the course. I agree with this. Jade, people are booking Rumble wins and all this other stuff, like, literally, like, next month. They're doing everything that they hate Cody did. <laughs> they hated Cody did, which was come back, win the Rumble, and then main event WrestleMania, and then lose. Or win, or whatever. But she should do it because uh, she's, she has cool she's a big, black, cool woman, you know what I'm saying, who Listen, deserves I want, it. I want every black person to win every title, but then we'll end up with Bobby Lashley with one. And we can't have that, can we? No, not at all. Um, <laughs> this is a fun episode. This is probably going to be one of the funniest episodes we've ever done. Uh, but I agree with you, Jalen. Um, non-wrestling hot take, no real take, but shout out to y'all. Love y'all boys. See? Nice thing to say after you done fucking through, you, you digitally threw your it's water bottle. shit something. about me right now on Discord. I'm talking oh, to these really? niggas right now. Oh, wow. You talk about DMV. Listen, I'm, 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 the attention is paid. Listen. Okay. I, I, DMV is, is, is the second in command. You feel me? He's is second he? In- <laughs> is he? I've deemed, him, I've deemed it so. What did he do last night that got y'all so mad? We're not going to talk about this on the podcast. Slide <laughs> up to the Discord. It's it's nuts in there. Um, <laughs> just, to, just as a heads up, the spoiler talk chat has been on slow mode. <laughs> and the I slow mode thing is two hours. Can you tell me what time it happened? I did it. I turned on slow mode at, at about 10, 10, 40, 10, 10, 45 p.m. Yeah. during the main event where one basketball game finished and I came back to spoiler talk to see what's happening. And I said, what the hell is going on in here? I said, no, everyone watch the show by yourselves. <laughs> like, get out, <laughs> like, get out. So as you can see, our discord is kind of crazy. Um, next one comes from Novak. Shout out to Novak. Shout out to his great work that he's doing on Awful Announcing. I love Novak. Um, we love Novak. I mean, how could you yeah. not? If he was fighting on the streets, I would show up like Jonathan Majors with the same outfit and break. I would jump people from Novak for sure. Easily. Don't even have to tell me twice. Who? That guy? All right. I would fucking stone cold stun somebody for this nigga. Absolutely. Not even a nigga. Keep going. (laughs) AEW women division creates so much apathy that it's hard to envision any kind of breakthroughs. People turn the (laughs) channel when they're on. You play a mystery box game with who's going to show up weekly. At most, you might get four women on a show. The only way they have a chance is if the booker seeds power. After four years, I'm absolutely willing to be that defeatist about it. There is no point that the, there is no point to that division as it's currently structured, and Mercedes is absolutely no savior, nor should she be expected to be. Mm. It's hey. a cook for the women's division in AEW, but I don't think people see it. 
at all. It's, People are like, oh, these women are so talented. And I'm just like, that's amazing. They do nothing on the show. They contribute and, nothing to the show. And they do nothing for you on the show. And this isn't even bias. Like, I can respect that Impact's got a great division going on over there. I can respect the Joshi promotions that do really great work. Can we just call a spade a spade and just say, stop acting like Mercedes showing up is going to make Tony say, oh, that's right. We do got great women on the show. It hasn't happened for Soraya. It hasn't happened for Tony. It hasn't happened for any of those people. Like it, it's it's time to honestly just be honest and just stop watching that show for women's wrestling, bro. Like it's just it's no. Just but not- then if we don't watch it, people now complain. It's like I don't even watch. So why would they even why would they even do anything if you don't even watch? Everyone tunes out. <laughs> like that lady who always posts stuff. That um, lady who always posts stuff. <laughs> I'm not gonna say where they work now, but um, because I like one of the ladies, but um, your coworker is annoying. But mm. <laughs> with that, with that said, yeah, I think I feel like getting beat by a show with five women's matches when you have all your top guns on that show. AEW started off at 940 something ratings and then immediately fell off a cliff once long John Silver and whatever fucking dude goober he teams up with came on television. Mm-hmm. But yet the people stayed the course. People Can watch we- people watch women who just started wrestling three months ago. And they're watching them, and they're invested, and they love it, and they main event the show, and they had a fucking classic. Keep it trilla, keep it really true, and shout out to Lyra Valkyria again because because people didn't Bird see that gang. they didn't see that coming, but she was really putting in the work. She really put in the work, and I think NXT's got two legitimate baby faces that I really hope that they don't squander, and I almost feel like they need to just call Roxanne up because I it's going to be tough. Because they're, I mean, they have a division that's big enough to carry on two major programs with two major baby faces. But I also feel as though, like, Roxanne's first reign was just so cut at the knees that you kind of have to do it again. You know what I mean? Like, you, like you have to do a, you have to give her a real reign, but you can't do it at the expense of Lyra, who has some real support. But then, if you have Jay Cargill, that could be a good mountain for Roxanne to cross when it, whenever it happens. So who knows? Absolutely. Yeah. You don't think they're giving Jade a undefeated streak, right? They they're not going to do that again, right? Um, I don't know, but I don't think they would. Uh yeah, I don't think so. Um, next take. Thank you, Novak, for that. Next take comes from actually there are two takes. It comes from Boy Idiot Wrestling Era, who I believe is Soho Sultry on Twitter. She hates. Give me. up, Ed. She hates me though. Oh. Well, we'll see. No, I don't think so. Um, Because I listen to the show. Um, Give up, Edge. I am open to eating my words, but one thing that's getting really old is they WWE acts acting like they were held back from doing something really crazy, creative, artistic shit, and then coming into AEW and dumping some of the television in my lap. I don't know how AEW fans aren't rebelling by now. What started out as a company that was completely different from WWE with acts like Adam Page, Young Bucks, and Ricky at the forefront. I don't know if Ricky was there at the forefront, but Ricky was there. Um, It's now just a place where people in WWE can go to become the most popular person in the room because they damn sure aren't in the current landscape. Mm -hmm. I commend Brian, who's injured again, by the way, because (laughs) you got to talk about that. He is injured again. Um, I commend Brian. Because at the least, he very admitted that he just wanted to bleed and have matches, and he's just <laughs> done just that. Um, you know, this is all you, the know how, you know how AEW fans are rebelling against Adam Copeland? They're just not yes. watching the show. They're not watching the show at all. That's how they're rebelling against him. This is all to say my hot take is that WWE talent, especially of Edge's caliber, should be barred from going to AEW going forward <laughs> and should have <laughs> never been allowed in the building. A is re- that's real. That's that's fucking real. I agree with that. I feel like there should be a moratorium on signing WWE talent past a certain age. I don't mind them signing any WWE talent. I think that it's crazy that people aren't uh, seeing that they said that they would not do those things. But you know, it is what it is. It's business. But like, 
at the end of the day, like it's like, what are they getting out of Edge right now? What are they getting out of Edge right now, Meals? What are they getting? Or I'm sorry, Cope. What are they getting out of him? I don't fucking know, bro. It's it's literally nothing. He has not been on a show where they have gone over a million <laughs> of viewers on this show. He gave up the promised land to go live out his dreams as a a less successful version of himself. I don't know. I can't talk about Edge for another week in a row because it hurts my soul to because I'm I'm consistently I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Like, but I don't know. He's making his money. He's happy. He's doing all the things that he wants to do. But yeah, I feel like Edge. Here's the thing. I feel like there's one thing where Edge shouldn't be barred from AEW, but I think that Tony himself shouldn't be placing them in prominent roles neither. Um, I could see a person like Christian who's grinded, who's been there for three years and who's actually developed a character having a thing role. Um, he was there during like the punk era and he won't he do was, shit. Yeah, he was doing nothing. He was um, He was the manager for Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. So... It, it, I don't know. I don't think you can just have people come in and just take up these spots from various other people and say like, "Hey, this is awesome. Shouldn't you watch this?" I don't know. It is what it is. I don't think anyone's going to be excited about whatever Edge has planned for. Um, what's that fucking pay per view? Full Gear. But Full who gear. knows? It's probably a tag match. It's a tag I, match. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> wondering. Probably with Sting and something, which is. Also, who wanted to see Edge team with Sting? Like, no one wanted that. Like, bro. Did you? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe oh. in, like, 2008, it would have been fire, but I don't know. Um, non-wrestling hot take. I stay away from dating discourse because I'm normal. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I did come across that list meant for engagement. And I just want to say, if you live in a city like New York, and you're taking your date out to chain restaurants, you're kind of nasty and you're back big. Get your ass on Yelp and research, mama. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, hey, bravo. Bravo. This is this is fantastic take. So, Sultry, you know I want to do your... If we have time, I'll do your second one. But we got to get through the rest of them. So, I appreciate you, though. Um, next one comes from either Novel or Novel. But nonetheless... Big Rhea Ripley Stan. Appreciate it. To no surprise. They, they hate me now. I think they oh, hate Oh, really? Me. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Well, they so. submitted a hot take, so they can't hate you that much. Okay. Um, Rhea Ripley is helping redefine the role of women in wrestling can have with her current run. I agree. Yep. To me, it feels like a China, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like China was also in that aspect. Now, I feel like China, in a sense, felt like she got demoted when she started working with women. Um, but it doesn't feel like that with this. It, yeah. it, it definitely feels as though with uh, with Rhea, um, she's a mastermind in a way that the men usually are, and how they're allowed to go bet- between different weight classes, and even even you know sometimes fucking with the women. Like Cena's done it before, stuff like that. Like she feels like a big deal when she's on screen. Like she was all over, all over Raw uh, this week, so. You know, she's yeah, she's become one of the most prominent figures on the show. Like she is. She is that like she came out, she came out to kick off the show. I was like, she is that bitch. Look at her. Look at her. Two men and she's in the center. And they're coming (laughs) out to her entrance song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, look at that shit. You go, girl. Um, Next one comes from Big Bosa. What up, Bosa? LA Knight's current promos are whack and never memorable. <laughs> or hold any weight due to how vapid they are. He never feels like he's talking to a person he's feeding with or assessing what's happening. Speaking in general or relation to himself, but still not talking to or in relation to the opposition. It's all in a vacuum. Um, I've had this critique of uh, LA Knight, and it became way more evident during this week's show. Where the, yeah. the little uh, the little uh, thing segment. First of all, Roman is a comedian. Let's just get that out the way. <laughs> you've been tickled, Roman say you've been tickled by this nigga all fucking weekend, bro. This this nigga. First of all, 
He said, have you ever had a championship match ever? So you don't really know what you're doing right now, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that is sent me so much. And I think LA Knight is just like he's biting his tongue. He's That chapped his ass. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but um, I think LA Knight should speak more to the people and have them included in the things that he's doing. I know there's a sense of like um, the persona that you know, the man, the, 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 the charisma and stuff like that. But even like, even that quick moment where he's like telling the crowd to shush, like, don't say my thing right now because I'm in the middle of something to me. That was weird. That was weird. And also I don't think it let them say it. The Miz is a heel. And when he says greatest to the talk show, the he lets the crowd say Miss TV. And then he says Miss TV. Anyway, he's a full blown heel, but he knows the crowd is a part of the show. Mm -hmm. LA Knight doesn't feel like he acknowledges that part of it. Um, Only acknowledges kind of like self. So I haven't really gotten into it because I don't really feel included. Cody will talk to me directly through the screen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cody will have some sort of reference or something along those lines. But LA Knight, I feel like, shout out to him getting the opportunity that he is right now, but Personally, me, I'm not. I'm not with it. I I just think he looks like outclassed. You know what I mean? Like it, it, he look. He just definitely doesn't look like he's. I, I think the the visual to me is the bigger deal. The, right, like the visual of it looks like a bigger deal than actually whatever is going on on the screen, because I I think that when 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 all he's saying is I'm a dangerous man. You've never seen anything like me before. I'm going to take your title. It's very all very basic. It doesn't really feel like natural in a lot of ways. And when we already know, you know, we already know what the outcome will be here. But it's like I'm starting to get concerned about what the match is going to be like. And I hate to, I you know, I, I love to be, I would love to be surprised. I think Jimmy and and him had a great match. I'm not going to talk about who carried who here, but I thought that like. You know, it definitely was an anomaly between all of the major matches he's had this year. Like he's he's not had a match to me that's like crossed like a two star barrier this year. Yeah, I haven't really been wild. I don't know. Miz usually has great matches, and I just couldn't see it with uh, with LA Knight. Um, non wrestling hot take from Bosa says Crocs are the most hideous shoe. The comfortability can't be worth it. I can't wear them. Get off. Crocs. I got some. Get I got some Birkenstocks though. <clears throat> I love Crocs, so I don't agree with um with the dry with uh with um dry sandwich man. Um, <laughs> next one comes from Davin. Davin says, and we're gonna we're gonna speed through this. It's like next fifteen minutes or so. Um, WWE's fan base is objectively made of more families and more diverse than any other wrestling fan base in the world. A lot of the online discourse that is demeaning WWE fans is based in racism. Whoa, this went somewhere. And anger at modern WWE embracing more diversity with its stars. AEW shows in New Japan are indistinguishable from clan rallies. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Bunch of crackers with a J- Japan with a J- Japan fetish. I don't agree with this. Um I agree that WWE is more diverse. I agree that they're pushing a lot more people of color and all the proponents to that stars. Um, I don't believe that a lot of the online discourse is based in racism. Um, mm-hmm. I believe it's based in willful ignorance of <laughs> ignoring all of the red flags and a lot of the things that are going for the sake of good matches. Um, AEW shows and New Japan shows are indistinguishable from clan rallies is nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. I ain't never heard of that. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, let's see. Next one comes from Julia. It says, Lurker since 2019. If this is your first hot take, shout out to Julia. Listen, Julia, we need more women to listen to this show. So if you're a woman, um, <laughs> please. What's up? St- yeah. yeah, since 2009, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Um, all it says is Santos Escobar is mid. <laughs> Jesus, I, I I will say that I'm not I'm none too I'm none too pleased with his creative. I, I can I can say that for sure. There was a 
there was a debate on um, War Report this week that if you had to take Santos Escobar or Andrade, who would you take? I'd take Santos. Mm, that's interesting. I would take Andrade. I don't know. He can't. Andrade can't talk. But Santos is... I don't even feel like... I don't know. I guess his creative... He doesn't feel that interesting currently right now. Because he feels like creative. handcuffed. He right, seemed... Right. He was more... He was way better. Like, and you could agree with this. He was way better when he right, was still... in NXT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, even when he was in the main roster, when he was a heel, like, he was way better. Like, he had great matches with Nakamura... Great match with Ricochet. All of that happened this year. Like it, it was, it, it was good. He was, he was cutting more promos. He was talking more. They need to put the and and again, we got it. We 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 literally have, I guess, something coming up very very soon with him. You know, on on uh, at, at the pay per view. But um, I, I really just think it's just creative. I, I think I, I think that I don't think we're being unfair. I think it it does suck. Um, but I'm I'm not picking Andrade. Like at the end of the day. He can't, Andrade can't talk. He's just he's just good matches. No, there's no connection to what he does in the ring anymore. Like I watched that Daniel Bryan match, I was like, it was just two niggas having a match. There was like no real like emotional connection, and that's something that Santos has been able to do through NXT, and he hasn't been able to prove or show in in the main roster yet. But I know that he can do it. I'm I'm like long run long run, you know. I'm, I would choose I would choose Santos. Like I just think he's just a better character all around. I could see that. Um, this painting place. You know, two weeks ago, I think that painting, and they're still calling me. Um, <laughs> next one comes from Mimi, a.k.a. the wrestling chick. Shout out to you, Mimi. Hey, Mimi. Um, it says, after six years of wrestling evolving as an industry, we have wrestlers have listened to you to evolve into blueprint black media. Feedback and growth are gifts. How do you feel like you both have evolved as a tag team? Hmm. Look at that. A question. That's a good question. How have we evolved? I, I, I think uh I, I think there's certain tells and there and there's certain things that we do as we do a show that like not a lot of people pick up on. Like it's a it's something that I'm still developing with like Josh and Mark, where it's like I know kind of what you're gonna say before you say it. And I think that's probably why we don't argue that much anymore, because we we kind of like settled. You know what I'm yeah. saying? On, on, on what it is. And, and I think that it's it's not that we accept it. It's that we know. I, I think that I think the better phrase to use is that we know when to pick our fights. We know when it will be better to have this argument rather than have it later. But I also feel as though our opinions kind of merged into one also. So I feel like we also have a a very. Compared to like most things. I think we both are very skilled at what we do to like literally the, like almost the highest level because I could host this show. You could host this show. <laughs> I could do color. You could do color. We can interchangeably. Sometimes we even do it in the middle of segments. Sometimes I'll take SmackDown for whatever reason. And then you'll start thing in raw. Like we can, I feel like we've, in terms of just evolving, we become completely better by doing this for consistently for as much time as we do. Um, we pay attention to the topics um, and give analysis just rather than just reactionary, um, more analytical based things. And then also, I think just both professionally, we've evolved in our own professional lives that has lent to pretty much our perspective on this podcast as well. Um, just the stuff that we've been through personally and then also professionally where we're working, it's lent to all this. That's why we can come with you from the aspect of a business side, a marketing side, all this other side, and most wrestling podcasts can't. They just come to you from the wrestling side or they mind what we say or something along those lines. But um, I think we have, we've definitely evolved. Her non-wrestling hot take, which is actually the wrestling hot take, which is funny. I think she put it in the wrong spot. Um. Becky Lynch will forever be unforgiven for 26 seconds. Mimi, let it go. <laughs> yeah, let it go. We had a conversation about this, Mimi. You have to let it go. Come on now. It, it, it's oh, it like look at what Bianca's done <laughs> since. <laughs> like, how could you even say that? She you about can't... to win the championship. <laughs> she about to win the championship. I feel like, like. I, I just don't. Ooh. I I I. She might be joking. She's trolling. I, I'm just gonna yeah. say that's she's trolling. I, I feel so. Um, next one comes from Keith. Keith 
Keith says, man, if what I'm hearing is real, poor Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he's never going to live that down. Never living um, it down. He keeps talking about it. At this point, just take the fact, take it, take the the fact that you're a meme, bro. Like you, you yeah. keep talking about it, bro. It just, just, it, it's over. You're always going to be joked. Um, next one comes from Ron Ryan. Says the prophet should turn on Bobby Lashley in the near future because he has not raised their stock since they aligned with him. Um, I don't know if turn is the right thing. I think a creative, they should, um, they should all go under a creative reboot. Yes, I don't think suits I, make the man. <laughs> suits are a good look for them. I just think that the, like I don't see a, I don't I don't think that I foresaw a world where Lashley would be the talker in a group. I just don't think that that's cool or interesting to me. I think Montez is a great talker. I think uh, Dawks is a great talker. Let them do what they do best, and they can still be with Lashley. I just think that you just need to you know develop this a lot better than what it is. Like I, I just don't. It does not look cool to me. And if when we first heard about yeah. this thing happening, I was like, okay, I'm with it. And it's just not cool. Like I like their new theme. I think their new theme is kind of is, is is kind of cool. I, I love the, you know, but I think I need a full rebrand from them. And and I just don't know if, you know, I don't I don't I don't think we're not gonna get it, but I I don't know where it goes until they get that. I think the best stables usually all the characters involved has some sort of distinct personality that sets them apart. Um this does not why do they keep calling me this is nuts this is like a fourth time in a row um should i answer on the podcast no um but yeah nah i think it they need to we need to see more of the property's personality like it needs a little bit of creative re, um overhaul i think personally i've seen people with suits people go immediately go to the suits and feel like it's like they're gonna they're gonna become a new person it actually happened my first major memory of that was when Crime Time broke up and they put Shad Gaspard in a suit mm. and then released him like fucking three months later. Like it, it's not the end all, it's not the save all be all to just say like change how they look. Uh, you got to present them in a stronger, different way. Um, next one comes from Jay. Jay, you have two. I'm not sure which one to go with. How yeah, about this? I'll go. No, just, it just says Jay. Okay. Um, I'll go with the first one. Okay. A lot of the people released in 2020, 2021 have done almost nothing. Uh, Soraya? Hold on. W releases. That, that was 2022. I'm, I'm bugging. That's 2022. Yeah, that WWE was... releases 2020. I mean, most 2020 releases were definitely, it was like Heat Slater fucking, <laughs> like, um, People that they just didn't need Aiden English, like uh, Kurt Hawkins, Curtis Axel, EC3, Eric Rowan. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Leo people Rush. Was people was mad. Well, Leo's in New Japan. Doing Jack Gallagher, Kyrie well, Singh. Got, got hit with them alley, them alleys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alley. So yeah, he ain't doing shit. He was doing like boxing, like bare knuckle brawl boxing or some shit, I think. Carl Anderson, who does nothing but is employed. Uh, Cassius Oh No, like, yeah, a lot of people. Rusev, good lord, No Way Jose, where's he? Serena Deeb, Tino Sabatelli, who just has a podcast with his wife now, I guess. Um, the only one I say, and probably the most successful one out of 2020 list is Zach Ryder, which is nuts. Um, 2021, a little bit more active. Ours to Black. Andrade, iconics. Andrade is wrestling Brian Danielson, so that's something. Yeah, Drake Maverick. Well, I, I think is actually part of WWE. No. no. Um. Eva Marie, Frankie Monet, who is now Taya Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie. Grand Metal League. Blah blah. blah. Uh, twenty twenty. I'll say for sure. Twenty twenty one. A little bit more of an active list. Um. Next one comes from Work Lurk Chill. Says so, Mark, he's in our chat as well. Shout out to him. Absolutely. I, like, I, I, love to, I love to see him get more active in the chat too. I've been noticing it a lot more. I, I, him and Ron, way more active in the chat. Appreciate that. I think at first it was kind of like, I don't know if I want it, but now they 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 completely in. I, I like it. I fuck with it. Shout out to Work. 
Well, it says Becky's recent reign with the NXT title was one of the most effective reigns I've seen in a while. It got multiple women across all three brands spotlight and quite a few good matches out of it. So we talked about this earlier. We fully agree. Um, the non-wrestling hot take is not a hot take, but shout out to everyone on the Discord. I'm really thankful for having a place where I can hop on and shoot the shit about wrestling or anything with cool people. So if that's not a great thing to join the Discord. There you go. I predicted it. I predicted that that I predicted that he felt more comfortable with us. So there we go. This goes a family, man. Except for today, I gotta, I gotta. Yeah. We have a family meeting. We having a family meeting next week. Yeah, we gotta have a family meeting. Um, NXT is geared towards. Well, this one comes from J Mac. Sorry, NXT is geared towards adults, so it'd be dope if it was TV fourteen. While Raw and SmackDown have to stay PG because it's more family product. Otherwise, it's no surprise that TV. NXT is having more consistent viewers than AEW because they really worked on the storytelling and building up their acts. Um, I don't even think the TV rating matters. God with doesn't. NXT. No, um, I, I, I think with the with 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 the yeah. rating, you're looking at how it goes up, and that's you're looking at the retention rate of how this new talent actually retains viewers. So what they did was they tested a completely new group of people, right? Mixed in with some kind of legends and indie guys. And we saw it was doing 600K, 400K. And then as time went on, it started going up. It started being consistent, consistent 650, consistent 675. Now it's at consistent 780, 800K. They've really shown the the work in a lot of ways with NXT. And, And I think that's why, to me, the more I look at it, it's probably one of the more... One of the like whoever wants to get NXT's TV rights deal, that's one of the more interesting commodities they could get from WWE because it's it's a it's a show that's growing, and it has talent on there that people have retained. So like I, I think in terms of how it grows, yes, it 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 does matter in that sense. Non wrestling hot take is Blue Lock can be the goat sports anime. I don't really like Blue Lock, so it is what it is. I don't know what that is. It's okay. You don't have to watch it. Um, let's roll through these because my niece just woke up and she is Aggie. Um, Nick Simon says AEW is just 2010s TNA with a better TV deal. They got goddamn Ric Flair, Sting, Jeff Jarrett, and the Hardys and Christian taking up TV time. I guess Edge now fits into the mold of former WWE guy whose signing didn't move the needle at all. Shout out to you, Nick. Um, Flo says Trick William. Go ahead. Bit, I think they got a little bit more talent than uh. Than TNA did early TNA. I'm sorry, go ahead. They got the better TNA got the better version of Jeff Hardy. Well, actually, that's debatable. <laughs> no, they did. I, say, <laughs> I think they got the is, same version. They got the same yeah. version. Of Hardy. Crazy how that works. Um, Flo says Trick is a future Mania main eventer. All right, I'm not can sure we that yet. But... Can we stop with future main? Can we just say future star? Can we just say future star? at this point a great talent you know what i'm saying something something like that um chris j says jimmy uso's character run is more interesting than jay uso's i feel jimmy being a loose cannon send off while being a fool to jay success is exciting than jay dealing with i'm a change man storyline i think they're both equally kind of interesting i think they've gone yeah. away from the, i think they've gone away from the nobody trusts him thing a little bit too much in my eyes but I think people wanted to see him with Sami Zayn again. Saying, uh, Sami Zayn again. I think people wanted to see him as a baby face, and you're fully getting that. I, I, I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, meat left on the bone in his storyline I, I, that I wouldn't write off yet. I think Jimmy's just a little bit more immediate because he's allowed to be a goofball, and there isn't really much to build there because Roman's not on TV every week. But Jay's on the longer show, you know what I mean? So like, there there is a lot more that they could do with him. Uh, you know, from week to week. So I, I'd say they're both equally as interesting. I think Jimmy's definitely more funny, but uh, they're both interesting. Any playoff contending basketball team willing to take, Jake's, take James Harden will have a rude awakening because that man does not want to win rings. Also, the Clippers want James Harden playing basketball in the city of LA knowing he will damn party every night. Are you ready for James Harden in your city? Oh, it's it's over. It's over. It is over. That motherfucker is about to turn the city upside down, bro. That, that's the worst city he could have been in is L.A. It's home. It's the worst place he could have been. 
He's not he's not taking this shit serious. I think when we look back at James Harden's career, it's going to be just like a, a huge like not even a what if, but like how. <laughs> it's not even a what if. It's like a how. How did this happen where he is able to kind of move teams like this? So, um yeah, man. I I, I think LA's ready. I mean, we, you know, you got the infrastructure to to handle uh, all the strip clubs that he's going to be at, but is, are the Clippers ready is, is the real question. Next one comes from Raw General Manager. It says, I respect LA Knight's hustle, to, but to keep it a buck, he's just not believable to me. Aside from Steve the Rock Co- Austin cosplay, he's done nothing. That feels important. Like Mill said last week, everything he does feel less about highlighting the story and about, more about highlighting himself. It's for the best. This match with Roman is happening now as opposed to stretching things further and f- fueling the delusion that he has a chance of winning. His ceiling is perennial mid-carder and temporary world champion who gets cashed in on, and that's okay. I think we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, we will. Um, Next one. A non-must? Okay. <laughs> um... My hot take, wrestling fans need to realize that not everyone can be a top star, and that's okay. We need jobbers and mid-carders because they're an essential part of the wrestling ecosystem just as much as we need great wrestlers and great personalities. If everyone becomes a world champion six months into their run, what's left for fans to root for or care about? Hope that wasn't too long. Congrats on six years. That was not too long. It was not. And and yeah, some people's jobs, jobbers, man. Listen, when Tony D'Angelo gets called up, Get ready to be Matt Tanner. Yeah, man. <laughs> Get ready to job, baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, a couple people called up, gonna just they're just gonna job. Um, and then probably find new jobs. Uh <laughs> last one comes from Stack Guy Greg. Oh god. Said all things considered, the existence of AEW has done more harm for than good for the pro wrestling industry. And the further they stray away from Cody's vision, the faster they're going to go out of business. I don't know about out of business. I don't know if that's going to be the reason. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's the reason they're going to go out of business. But I think definitely restructuring, to me, what happened before that. And I think with the restructure, it becomes then like that restructure of ROH where it was like, we got less money, but we got more talent. You know what I mean? Like, it is. I think that that's what, I think AEW scale needs to come down like tr- dramatically but that's not going to happen until something dramatic happens with them or they lose you know some talent that that they had but um i mean we don't even know what cody's vision was you know what i mean i can't really i can't call it he's never said what his vision was going to be there like or or his you know kind of like his manifesto for AEW's success but he even said that that shit was hard for him so i don't even think he trusted his own vision at the time and, that, and that's clear to me by some of the decisions he made with his own booking I don't think there is a clear direction or vision in that company. And that is the problem. And that is probably why he left. That is probably why Jay left, you know, that, that there is no vision there. And I think that, you know, even as wrestlers, as creative as they want to be, as much as they want to say that they have these creative ideas that they didn't get to show off, they need, they still need to be shown around. They still need to be bossed around, so to speak. You know what I mean? And I think that's really what it is. But with AEW, like as far as it causing more harm, I mean, look at the indies. You know what I mean? Look at look at have they leveraged the New Japan deal in a way that is like is that is purposeful and, and lucrative for both uh, companies meals? Do you think that they've done that for, for them? Nope. like they, they've taken stars off of shows. They've taken stars off of indie shows, even though they were told they'd be able to work both shows like they, they've done a lot of the things that they said they were going to do and walk back on it. So I, I can't see, I, I you know, not not critical harm, but definitely some harm for sure. Bonus take, Mercedes Monet response to the fan in the video that has been flown around was way out of line. She's a veteran and should have known better. And it, as it may stand, is evidence of why things didn't go her way while she was in WWE. So this is the the video of the little fan, the little weirdo guy, taking that, you know, at the New York City Comic Con. It's like, Sasha, I heard you left WWE because you didn't like what was going on. And she's like, word? <laughs> Is that what you hear in your little fairy tales? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, 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 the voice is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> your little fairy tales? Go back and reading your internet fanboy stories. Thank you. And um, yeah, you know, I personally wouldn't have answered it that way. 
but I also would be annoyed if someone was coming to me like that. Um, but me, I wouldn't have answered it that way. No. But these fans like say anything of these. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. I, I, get, I get people being annoyed at that. He's but, just um, the only one. Who, he's just the only one who recorded it. To be honest with you, could have been four more niggas who said the same shit. That's true. That that is true. But um, yeah, Greg's right there. I don't know about AEW out of business though. I can't. I I I can't. In good faith, say that that's going to happen at least anytime soon. Greg, can't get to your non wrestling hot take because we got to do predictions. But thank you, everyone who submitted a hot take this week. And make sure you stay, you follow us on all types of social media. And make sure you cop that, you know, hot take shirt that comes out at the end of the week. It comes out on Friday. It'll be at rncradio.bigcartel.com. Don't worry about the website right now because it's not up, but it'll be up soon. Um, and yeah. It's, it's, when you see it, you're gonna love it. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned. Um, let's get to this big Saudi Arabia pay per view that starts at ten in the morning for you. Yeah, let's try and try and get through this <laughs> real fast. Uh, yeah, 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 Crown Jewel, eight matches. Predictions going off. Of course, it's gonna be live from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. A, a lot less like. Have you noticed, like, the past couple of Saudi shows has been a lot less, I'm not watching this show. Like, people be locked in. <laughs> locked in, baby. O'clock. Listen. How do you think Collision's going to do next to this show? Well, this show starts, luckily, early in the afternoon. So, <laughs> Collision. Yeah. yeah, I feel like people are going to go do what they what they were going to do during that time, during Collision's time. They're going to say, oh, I'm going to just go out after. Maybe. I don't know. They got no, I mean, I don't know, whatever. They ain't got nothing going on in Collision this week, I'm assuming. Not as big as MJ versus Kenny. That's for sure. Biggest match ever that I had to go look at results for because it was just. Yeah. It was a good match. I'll give it that. Will you remember? Um, any- actually, I do. I remember watching it. Like, it's. It, you when I tell it you. Year, in a year. Um, I don't know. Probably, maybe or maybe not. Just because it's the first time they went against each other. And to be honest with you, the one thing that made it most memorable for me was like, this is how AEW TV main events should feel like, as opposed to what they actually are. <laughs> like, this should be, and I equate it more, this, to me, while this match was good, this is a standard Gunther match. You know what I'm saying? Gunther title defense on Raw. You know what I'm saying? Like, But this is how the main event should feel like in AEW, and they just don't have that right now. Uh, let's 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 kick it off right here. Uh, sp- uh kickoff match: Sami Zayn versus JD McDonald's. Uh, re- regular ass match. JD McDonald and Seth had a banger. I didn't even know they still had kickoff matches. <laughs> it's to get Sami on the show. I think it's cool. Sami's still going. You know what I mean? Like, it, I, yeah, he's still yeah. gonna be. They seemed to love him last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, next up on the show. Oh shit, we didn't predict it. I, I mean, I think Sammy's probably uh, right. Sammy. Yeah, Sammy probably. Yeah. <laughs> JD is uh, the Disco Inferno of uh, <laughs> the Judgment Day. <laughs> fucking, yeah, whatever. Oh, man. I love how awkward he is in promos, though. Like, you see, like, backstage with him last- yesterday. He was like, yeah, yeah. And, and John, <laughs> American, and I got Seth. And it's like, dog, can you please get comfortable with talking on a fucking show? Jesus. No. <laughs> Um, a lot of regular ass matches here, but uh, John Cena versus Solo Sokoa. It's been a really long time since John Cena's won a singles match, and his first singles match back is against. That's the a, beat. that's a little high. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like that's a lie. I feel like he. It's been a long time since. Well, I feel like he won a singles match on TV. I feel like he's won a singles match. Didn't he beat Triple H at oh. one of these shits like a couple years ago? No, oh, he had he had uh, he had tag matches. A lot of the time. Let me see. Keep going. Okay. So uh, this has been built with John Cena kind of inserting himself into the Bloodline storyline over the past couple of months. I honestly feel as though he's not going to be gone after this. Like, I, I don't know how people feel about it, but the strike isn't over. Mm. Like, I feel like he's still going to stick around in some capacity, at least to the end of the year. Um, I, I just don't. Because the thing is, if the if the strike ends realistically in the next week and a half or a week or so, you still run into holiday break. For a lot of these movies, a lot of these movies don't film over like Christmas and stuff like that and Thanksgiving. So like he's still gonna be free. But um, let's stay for yeah. Christmas. Yeah, 
this is his first uh his first kind of you know singles match in a in a long time on a, on a, on a big name show uh since yeah, main TV yeah or not not or his first, first big singles match since Mania right so it's that that would be yeah he had a couple of dark matches after SmackDown but this is his first since Mania Tell for sure so you got Solo here and. I think the question is, is that like, just do they think that the Cena win is more important than protecting Solo, who's taken a couple of like, kind of like whatever losses in the past couple of weeks? Like, he's taking some pinfalls in tag matches. He's taken a, a big singles pinfall to LA Knight uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. Which one to you is more important? I think Solo winning is more important, and also maybe taking out John Cena until Christmas or Royal Rumble or something along those lines, just so Cena can uh, get the holidays off. Yeah, because that yeah, nigga's yeah. not working. He's not working Thanksgiving. Um, but I think solo is definitely more important right now just to kind of like build him back up. So I would go solo over John Cena for sure. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Cena over solo. I'm Cause at the end of the day, I think that solo still kind of solo, but I think you got to cool him down at some point. He was beating everybody last year. Like he beat a lot of people that in my opinion, he shouldn't have really even gotten clean wins over in some, in some instances. Like if he did, be, if he did get beat here, I, I wouldn't cause too much of a stink over it. So I'm going to go Cena here. Okay. Uh, after this, we got Cody Rhodes versus Damian Priest. Listen, the way Cody dressed this man down in, in the For last, five years, I said, bro, <laughs> there's a long, there's a lot of time left in the show. Yes, I must have told him, Cody, we got five minutes left. Do something. He called him a hanger on. He basically called him a dick rider. <laughs> and he, then the show ended. <laughs> He's like, you're not the leader of Judgment Day. I was like, is this really the contention that we're all? He said, he said you pussy. I said, wow. He said, my, you he have, said, my you have the briefcase and you're not even world champion. Ew. <laughs> yeah, that, bruh, he was going off on Damian Priest. I think this is more more table setting for what, what comes up in a, in a match that I think we'll, we'll for sure have differing opinions on probably, but um, I think this would be, again, another Cody hashtag good match. Um, you got to get him on the show somehow. And I think that Money in the Bank winners always kind of lose, you know, these big matches. So I, I think it's pretty much written in the stars for Damian to lose this match to Cody. Yeah, I'm going to go with Cody winning as well. Just You just can't have Cody losing here. I don't think you have Cody losing for a while, to be honest with you. But um, after this, Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul for the United States Championship in a match that I feel as though WWE has a big opportunity to do some really cool things here. They have an opportunity to, as we talked about with Santos earlier, break that relationship up. You have an opportunity to put the title on Logan Paul and open up more rematches for him, more opportunities for him to be on TV, and you raise the prestige of that belt. I think we've talked about it here before. He could be taking the belt around the boxing matches. He could be taking it to his brother's matches. He could be taking it. He could have it on his his podcast. Maximum visibility right. for a belt that, in a lot of ways, is the redheaded stepchild to the IC title. In in a lot of ways, in the past two years, and I think that you you have a chance to to do something really cool and pull the trigger on on Logan Paul in a lot of ways here. I agree with you absolutely because that's exactly what was going through my head when he announced it during the end of his boxing match. Um, Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul is a major match, and I feel like we're going to see Logan Paul win this one. And yeah, that'll be that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think the opportunity is just too big to pass up. So I'm picking Logan Paul on this one. You have to. You, you got to go Logan here. I, I All think these you- matches are kind of straightforward. <laughs> Yeah, I I feel like they are too. I I do think there's one there's there's gonna be like, actually there's gonna be one shocker, I think, and and I and I think we're I think we're gonna get to it. I think it'll be two shockers maybe. So, um, next up we have EO Sky versus Bianca Belair for the WWE Women's Championship. Bianca, of course, returned two weeks ago to SmackDown to get her revenge on Damage Control. She's got a match with Bailey on this week's taped SmackDown, um, and then we're gonna lead to it's gonna lead to this match. Now EO has had, to me, an overachieving Money in the Bank cash-in title run. Overachieved mm-hmm. in so many ways. She's mm-hmm. you, never, you never get a Money in the Bank title reign that has gone as right as it, as it has for her. I, there were so many times me and you predicted her to lose this title <laughs> over the past couple of months, and she didn't. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But she didn't run into Big B. 
And I think that you have an opportunity again to further whatever story they might have going with EO and Bailey, which they kind of dropped out of the nowhere. I think they could pick it back up here if they if they really wanted to. But you have another opportunity to have Bianca have that title, and then you start to lead into really potentially a Charlotte match. Um, you know, you could you could have people get called up. You could you know you could have a lot of things that could happen with Bianca here with the title. I just don't know if they will happen immediately, and that's what I think people will get antsy about. I'm not too stupid enough to bet against Bianca Belair. So I'm just not going to. Um, to me, she's on the run of her life. She's someone who won the championship on one leg at some point earlier this year. Uh, while Io Shirai is good, and I can definitely see Io Shirai, Io Sky, been watching NXT takeovers, um, is good. I don't think, yeah, I think Bianca Belair takes this one easily begin setting begin moving uh all the pieces around for mania essentially yeah it, it has to reset it has to go back to, to to one at one point and um i i, I think you have to have her holding the title i think she gets another kind of other reign here but it does make me afraid for her if she will actually like her if her mania streak will continue <laughs> with whatever's going on with her going in as the champion again i was i was already iffy on it this year but i'm extra iffy on it if it's going to be charlotte <laughs> It may be next year. Imagine Charlotte beating uh beating Bianca for 15. How mad are you gonna be? Uh how mad is the internet gonna be? I think that would uh, the internet reaction would probably make cool me out on this one. I'd be like, all right, y'all doing too much. Yeah. Uh, you'd be you would it would make you so annoyed that you would be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, essentially. That's that's where it would go. Um Next up, we have Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax versus Shayna Baszler versus Zoe Stark versus Raquel Rodriguez. Fatal five-way match for the Women's World Championship. I expect this match to be a sprint for about nine minutes. <laughs> There's some good people in this match. There's some not-so-good people in this match. But overall, I think the match is going to be great. I think these ladies have the opportunity to show up and show out. I think um, it's very rare you get a powerhouse match like this one with this many powerhouse women on the roster at the same time. Um, but it's Rhea Ripley's world. Like, <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind. Like, not even oh, yeah. a little bit of a doubt. Zero doubt in my mind that it's, that it's on her, but I think you get an opportunity. She's watch out for Zia Lee. <laughs> She's knocking she bitches out. <laughs> knocking bitches out. Heard Can't my say, comments. Oh, I can walk. <laughs> I was like, hey, slow down, bitch. <laughs> I said, yeah, we get the random, the, the random fall winter push goes to her. <laughs> yeah. Like, so damn, of course. Okay. Wow. All right. But um again, you gotta you know, all, I feel like all the fear over Nia Jax was completely unfounded. And again, I haven't seen the match yet, so she could definitely be doing she could be up to Nia Jax things again. But um I'm pretty I, sure she'll be as terrible as she always was. But hey character right yeah here you go i got rhea ripley <laughs> winning this as well uh, i think i think all eyes are on raquel rodriguez at the at the royal rumble at this point and if if they're not you need to you need to bet on fucking football or some shit because that that's that's the easiest bet you'll have um seth freaking rollins versus drew mcintyre this is actually sneaky the most interesting title match on the show because there's so many machinations with the story you got sammy that could show up you got the Judgment Day all in full force on this show, and you have Drew McIntyre who is kind of in and out of a uh, of a, of a more uh, attitudinal character here. The story's been on point. I think they do need. Their, I think that after this Monday, they kind of got to. They they should probably back away from so much of the the pandemic stuff because if y'all wasn't talking about it that much in 2020, 2021, you shouldn't be talking about it now. And that's just that's just I my agree. feeling. You shouldn't I agree. be. Just, I, I think Seth going that far. Like it was good for that promo. It was good for that promo. No more after this. People were dying. They didn't care if you were world champion or not. That was nuts. <laughs> yeah, like it, it was. I'm like, y'all were supposed to be the escape at one point. Don't bring up that thing. Like it was cool for Drew to bring that up in that video package, which I thought was really well done. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I, but again, you guys are tipping into waters where y'all you never addressed it then. Don't be trying to fuck with it now. 
You know what I mean? You can't have it both ways. Like I think that, that I thought, you know, it was bordering on tasteless at some point because y'all, because at the end of the day, y'all were still running these shows when people was dying. Let's yep. be clear. Like y'all were still running them shows. Like I, I definitely had a major issue with that Seth promo on Monday, and I and I was like, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you some rope here, but it's still fucking head ass. Like that, that's that was not cool. I agree. But as far as this match, I'm gonna stick with my prediction here that. Drew will Drew will win this match. Damian will try to cash in and Rhea will stop him. That is my prediction. And that is how you start. Mm. That is how you stop the slide or start the slide of the judgment day. He will lose it. He will try to cash in on either Drew or even if Seth wins, you know, but even though I think Drew is going to win, he should win. But um, I think that I think he will be stopped ultimately by the judgment day from cashing in at, at Crown Jewel. Which will lead into Survivor Series. Yeah. Yep. Okay. With, okay. with whatever big match they have with Damian already not trusting the crew. Absolutely. Okay. I see the vision. I see the vision. I'm picking Seth Rollins to retain. It can still happen um, that way, too. It can still happen that way, too. That's the best part about it. It can still happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. No No doubt. Um, when yeah, is Seth, Seth lose Rollins. this title? I, I, I think, I, I, listen, you, you did it. My my thing with Seth is you did it, my my man. You did it. You got your you got your one. Hand it off. There's so many niggas on this show <laughs> that need to that need to sniff that title, bro. <laughs> Come up off it. <laughs> Come up off that shit, brother. I think he does lose it to Damien at some point, for sure. Oh, before, oh, wow. before, before the year is over. Okay. He will maybe, lose it to Damien. Maybe Christmas. Maybe yeah, that would be cool. Babyface uh, Damien or a Damien that starts off heel and goes babyface with the title? Um, Damien, who is heel, but leaning towards babyface now because he's getting fed up with everybody. I think Survivor Series will be a huge turning point in how Damien views himself and, you know, and part of this thing. And shout out to, the, for, well, listen to the rewriters from last week, shout out to the season finale, and shout out for Channing for bringing in. Um, Drew McIntyre is not kinky enough to join Judgment Day. Crazy. They're right Crazy. on the head. <laughs> Crazy. Right. Crazy take, but hit it right on the head. I was like, no, you know what? I can't see him in this. This man, not, a, um, this man not attuned with his with his freakness in order to be <laughs> right. Like what's Finn's freak? What, what's for what, what what's Finn's freakiness? We don't know. We Just don't know. But the, it's but you know it's there. Okay. You have to know it's there. I, I, I'll bite. I'll bite. Uh lastly, main event, I'm sure. The thing about the the cashing thing is that also it's like if you do that with out of the main event, that's kind of crazy. But you also like you also kind of tell everybody kind of what you think about LA Knight if you put him in the middle of the show. But the main, main event, I'm, I'm sure. Start of the show. Fuck it. <laughs> sure. Roman Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman uh, versus LA Knight for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns ain't working Survivor Series, <clears throat> which is crazy. To think about, but yeah, I feel bad for Chicago people, but also they got Cody. Hey, yeah, Cody. Go get Cody. Facts. Um, I am worried about this match going long. Maybe between. Randy Orton. To be honest with you, maybe Randy Orton. That was going to be my thought here. Oh. Is that if you have LA lose, you know how they love to do. They do it similar when you have Roman as the final two in the Royal Rumble, and you ha- you're like, "Oh my God, he's gonna win." You know what I mean? Like, you you'll have that you you kind of you kind of cure the sadness and the boohoo's of LA Knight losing this match. I'm not. I don't even want to talk about who's gonna win this, but um, you you kind of you kind of solve the boohoo's of him losing by bringing back somebody who is way more beloved than him, right? <laughs> as a cap. <laughs> No, but I'm just imagining L.A. Knight losing, and then I hear voices in my hitting. You know, and how you- immediately everyone forgetting what they just watched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to, you have to, brother. You have to sweep it into the dustpan. All right, buddy. Lo- Logan Paul will be ready for you. But look, but but again, it's like. Logan Paul's got a bunch of people he could face. He could face Kevin Owens. He could face like that's a big time thing. I th- I feel like LA Knight's still in a big time position if he's 
even close to the U.S. title or close to fucking Omos or somebody like that afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, that's still, you know, a big program for him that he could get babyface support for. But I just don't think, I, like, I worry about this match being longer than 20 minutes. I don't think he got it like Roman do. Nah, I don't think so either. But Roman's got a tough task against him. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. We're going to watch this match and laugh. I think that's what we're going to do as a family. Is this LA's biggest test? Oh, absolutely. This is this is it. It's not really it for him. I think he knows how thing this is, but I also feel like he's not fully aware of like what this means for his career um beyond just his own hype. Mm-hmm. Um like this is a moment where you can say i made someone look good it's very hard to make roman reigns look good roman reigns make himself look good but you can put him over you can put yourself over i think i think that what you're looking for is hard to make him look bad and if you make him look bad that's an indictment on you well right absolutely like if you uh, make roman reigns look bad you're you're a dumbass like you deserve whatever (laughs) you get for real but i don't think la's made anyone look good so like that, that's my, but again, you have Michael Hayes working on this. You'll have Triple H working on this. You have Roman Reigns working on this. You have Paul Heyman working on this. You have the biggest minds in the business working on this, but it's not, it's hit not going to hit him with the spear. How many boss? Just one. <laughs> I, th- I think, uh, do you think he'll get a visual three count on Roman? I think that they try and do that for people that they, they see a lot in like they did with Sam. No. Okay. Cody never got a visual three count, but I think that was by design. I, I think yeah, that, that I think that they was, knew that next year they were gonna do this again. Yeah, like I, I think the visual three count was by design. I, I don't think LA gets a visual three count here. And and again, you gotta remember, like, you know, the Cody Roman thing, there were so many layers to that story. So, like, you know, I, I just, can we get to that again? <laughs> can we get yeah, to Roman again? Fuck. Let's let's get over this shit. But I do think I do think Randy Orton comes back. I think that's his that's his uh, Royal Rumble opponent. I think uh, Randy shows up to kind of be the enforcer to to stop the bloodline and um, continue that story on. I think that, again you're getting the Avengers, you know what I mean, the Avengers Endgame kind of thing here. Because again, Roman and the, and the crew they took out Randy, and then and you have something coming here. So I, I would not be shocked if Randy Orton showed up again, or if he showed up at a at a goal, at the uh, SmackDown after. Uh, after Crown Jewel, so absolutely, it'll be like, damn, where's my bro at? <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Where'd my bro go? But yes, that that is Crown Jewel 2023. Did I miss anything? No, I didn't. So that'll be on Saturday. I'm actually gonna be watching that late, I think, or I'll be able, I'll be able to watch some of it, not all of it, because I'll be coming. I'll be on my way back home, but um, that'll be on Saturday, and I'll, I'll watch it as soon as I get back. But that's our predictions, and I want to thank everyone for for listening to us, rocking with us for the past six years on the A Show. Thanks to everybody that sent in uh, hot takes today. I think we got through all of those, um, and, and yeah, thank you guys for 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 being you know being with us for this long. And, and here's to another six years with with, with myself and Meals. So for Meals, I am Justin. Thank you guys for listening to the A Show. Please have a safe Halloween, and we'll see you guys next week as we go into the road to Survivor Series, which is only three weeks away. Jesus. But we'll be talking all about it on the show. See you later. Peace.